I'm a data engineer. I have some good background knowledge of Oracle. Not very good, but close to be good. And here in Subserve, I'm doing replication projects. So this is my like main main profile. So all the projects that I'm doing here are either migration project or replication. So this is either some some sort of data movement for the BI system. It's a, it might be blue green upgrade or something like this. And uh, here working in Subserve, I found very good product and I love it and everybody who touched and use it are in love with this product as well. So I will tell you a story. I will tell you history, how I uh, find this product, how it save our soul, should I say, and uh, how it helped us to, uh, to finish project successfully. Okay, so and today I would like to present this, this product. I would like to speak about this. I would like to speak about the architecture of the product, uh, say a couple of words about product features, maybe discuss a couple of use cases, and we'll do small product demo. And maybe if we have, we'll have some time left after this. <laughs> this this meeting and you will have desire and I will have possibilities then we can speak about when to use and when not to use reps. So this is just more or less how to say it. it's like a use cases but it's more general so it's about the project where to use so it's when you need it or when you don't need it. Okay so let's probably get started. I don't know whether or not we record this meeting probably yes. Okay cool. Okay. Yeah, this is the next one. So we are starting. Oh, one second. Let me. I'm feeling myself as a retired child doing all this stuff is with Zoom. But okay, so I I I beg your pardon. I need to move these videos to something. Okay, now. It's... So we are speaking about what is Repsense. So what is Repsense? Firstly, this is replication and migration tool for Oracle and MS SQL databases. And this is product which is to propagate data from these databases into various database, databases and various systems. So it can take data from Oracle, from MS, push this data into another Oracle instance, push this data you know, into S3 bucket, into Snowflake, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, uh, what is what this product is able to do? Which, what is support? So this is initial load. When speaking about initial load, I mean uh, this is initial set of data to be propagated before the replication is started. So we need to um, have some set of the data, which is like an init set of the data to be loaded into the target system and then uh, perform all, all the replication operation on this data. And uh, there are a couple of ways how we can do it. So if we are, if we are doing project Let's say Oracle migration project, we need to move one Oracle from, from one place to another place, then uh, and then run replication and keep both databases in sync. Uh, the initial load, you can do it using Crepstance. You can do it by yourself using, using some like a standard tools. You can do export, import, you can do backup, recovery, and then using Crepstance, you can say, start the replication from some given timestamp and this timestamp should be the same at what timestamp you had your i don't know dump or backup exported or created so you can synchronize 
uh, initial replication using this approach. So you can you can have your backup, you can record your timestamp or SCN or LSM, and then you can force reference to start replication through uh, at this given timestamp, and your database is going to be in sync. So you will have initial copy propagated by some standard tools, and then all the replication will will be started at this timestamp and rolling from the changes from this timestamp. So the databases are going to be in sync. And the same is achievable using Krebson. So you don't, you might be in a situation where you can't take Oracle dump and insert this into the snowflake and you need to let's push all the tables from source and into the target, create this table and load initial set of data. And this is something that Krebson can do for you. And all you need is just to provide one parameter and press a couple of us. So Repsons supports initial data load. And then it supports the mail and the daily replication. So when I'm speaking about DDL replication, let's put this into, in quote. So it's quote unquote DDL replication. If we are speaking about replication solution, the replication solution primarily are to replicate tables and data in tables. And when we are speaking DDL replication, this is everything that uh, relates to, to the table. So this is any statement which are either change table structure or doing some you know, drop, create, et cetera, et cetera. So by DDL replication, uh, what is supported? Perhaps it supports any create, alter statement for tables. It supports uh, any modification of primary key or unique indexes, because this is an important part of the replication. And it supports some DDL like alter table rename, alter table modified column, alter table drop column, create column, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So everything which is related to which is relating to uh, table, to structure. To how we are storing this, this is supported by REPS. If you uh, create a new partition for table, it's going to be supported for us by REPS. If you, I don't know, uh, truncate your table, it's going to be supported. But any statement like create view, create procedure, create function, create anything, th this statement are not, they are not supported. There is still possibility to capture these statements as well and propagate and make it a part of the replication, but I, I'm not going to cover this as this is not a main functionality and this is not something that reference was created for. So saying about the daily replication, uh, it's more about the changes that we can do for tables. Any structural changes, any, any modification, anything that relates to, to, to the table. And Next is object and data transformation. So what we can do here, using Krebstons, we can do some sort of transformation. So this is to reformat quote unquote statement, which is to be executed on the target side. And this statement can be reformatted to rename table, to rename column, to add new virtual column, to modify some column attribute like we can say, so this column is here is work card. And we need to convert this this column in into the I don't know date time time timestamp type the target site and we need to store this as timestamp. So we can define rule saying that this the data for this table has to be converted into some timestamp format that we can provide as well. And uh, this column is going to be timestamp column. It's not going to be work hard column anymore. So modification of data type, modification of column name, of some column attributes, et cetera, et cetera, are supported. So we can say that uh, handle this column as a primary key or handle this column as a unique uh, identity column like for MySQL, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of possibilities how to reformat the statement. You can, I don't know, you can, you can, you can have some virtual column, you can have another column which are uh, using to, um, to, 
populate data for this column. So you can say that, okay, taking data from the first column and combine this to the second column, make a mail from the last name and first name, add some domain, etc. Uh, so all this stuff are supported and uh, by transformation engine. So you can have various transformation doing your reformatting of your statement, all this stuff. And, uh, we, and uh, on today's demo, I will show you how it works uh, and how it's supported by DD replication, how it's supported by initial load, etc. Et so, so next is data filtering. Data filtering, this is... Uh, uh, so this is, it's all about to filter data on the target side. And here is, I'm going to give you just a simple example uh, where I was, I, let's say me personally used this and it was in one project. So they said, Hey, we have, a, and I will just give you an example and it's going to be understandable for everybody why we need this field. So they said, we have a big table that we need to clean up every this is something that came from customer. We need, we have a big, we have a big table that we need to clean up every month. And this is part of our production environment, but we have a reporting database and we would like this table to be there. And we would like to ignore any delete operation in the reporting database. So we, we would like to have all the legacy data, everything that was inserted into this table uh, in the reporting schema. So the solution is to put this table into the replication, replicate data into the reporting table from the main table and put the filter saying that uh, we are going to ignore any delete statement. And with this type of configuration, so everything that was created, updated on the source side is, is populated to the target side. But if something was created, uh, deleted on the source side, this statement is, is is not handled because the filter was configured and no delete is coming to the source target side, sorry. Which means that we have all the original records on the target side, but even if they were, were deleted on the source side. So this is why we need filtering. We can, we can provide more complex logic and uh, we can put even SQL query as a part of filter. So we can say, okay, insert data only if the, the, this record does not exist in some other tables in some other view, et cetera, et cetera. So we can implement uh, various configuration with data, this data filtering, and this is part of the uh, reference functionality. And the last one, this is loopback control. Loopback control, I, here I'm saying that this is ability to control feedback loops. What does it mean? So this feature used for complex replication topologies. If we're speaking about any bi-direction uh, configuration, any multi-master, I don't know, any configuration like cup and spoke, any complex configuration when you have, uh, let's put it in this way, when you have data written into the database by replication tool and, and data but read by this replication tool so and we need to control the statement which was produced by replication tool so we, if we have let's say two two box two servers and one is uh, generate some data and this data is coming to target site and then it's it's inserted into the target site then and we have another process which is taking the data from target side quote unquote and put it back to the source side so both nodes are equal uh, then uh, we need to control the record that produced by ourselves and reference has this mechanism so it can identify what the record was produced by application what the record was produced by reference and what process produced this produces this records so this is about loopback control. With this feature, we can do a various type of um, complex replication topologies. And we will speak about this uh, on the next slide. Okay. Okay, next one. So what is currently supported? 
Redstone supports, as I said before, Oracle and SQL Server as a source databases. And, and it can use Postgre, Redshift, S3, Snowflake, SQL Server, MySQL, and Oracle databases as a target. And like I love to say, there is always something. So, and here is some prerequisite that your database has to meet before you need to start REST. So if you're speaking about Oracle database, uh, it supports only Oracle database starting from 10G until maybe 20, Oracle 21C, I don't know, but all the latest version are supported. It supports uh, real application cluster. It supports um, various methods, how we can take data from Oracle. You can use log miner, you can use binary log reader. Binary log reader is not right some terminology, but it's this is the method to take data from uh, archive or redo log directly. And uh, uh, you can even deliver your archive log to the local reference box and process it them in there. Uh, but the database must be in archive log mode. And uh, uh, we need to enable supplemental logging for database. So we need to do some like a, to implement some prerequisites. And for SQL Server, uh, replication uh, here is based on change data capture mechanism. So MySQL has to permit allowing CDC on the database. So it should be, so CDC is supported. This is a very popular feature. It's supported by standard edition, by enterprise edition, but it's supported by standard edition since 2019, I think, before this was supported by enterprise edition. So you need to have a, a proper version of MySQL, which allow you to enable CDC. That's it. And uh, there is no limitation, like it's going to, we are not, uh, like RDS installation or, I don't know, uh, Azure or, so the, the main the main requirements is for this S S SQL Server database is to have possibility to enable change data capture and that's it. Uh, and have a physical connection to the database. So reference needed. So reference take data through the database connection and this is the requirement. Okay, so speaking about this uh, support and unsupported databases, uh, to be squeaky clean, uh, I need to say that there are two reference products. So, and if we go here, let's say to the marketplace, uh, this way, we can see that there are two references. First, first is reference advanced edition and another is reference. So this is the same product, absolutely the same. The difference is that reference advanced edition is a bit expensive, expensive than references, and it supports more databases than references. The engine is the same. Everything is the same. The only limitation how many how many types of database is here. The rest is is the same. So uh, if we coming back to databases, uh, Repstance, just Repstance supports Oracle, SQL Server as a source, and SQL Server and, uh, and Oracle as a target, nothing more. So if you need replication from Oracle to Oracle, if, you, if, if this is just, I don't know, some migration product, process, or you need uh, migration from SQL to Oracle and vice versa, and then Reference is enough. You can save, I don't know, 25% uh, of your costs by using Repsense, not Repsense Advanced Edition. And it, it going, it's going to work in the same way as Repsense Advanced Edition would. But uh, if you need more, let's say, complex configuration, if you need your data to 
to be inserted into Snowflake, into Postgre, something like this, then you need to go with Reps advanced edition. There is no other thing. Okay, so this is what's supported. Uh, uh, you can find more uh, details on, on the prerequisites for the databases in Oracle in, in Repsons documentation. So there are some limitations like system database are not supported, something is supported, something is not, so it's, it's better to go there. But uh, the the configuration which supported by Repsons is is uh, uh, is much more, let's say, um, uh, much more agile. More, more so you, you, the Repsons, Repsons work. Some uh, Repsons can do replication uh, with the database when any other solution have failed. So they said we don't support this, but Repsons does. This is the, the good example is that many solution does not support fully support blob objects. Repsons does. It support. Blob, clob, and clob, uh, and it can be stored as security blob. Uh, it might be compressed. It might be I don't know. Uh, the, the duplication might be enabled for this, etc., etc. So it has how to say it, uh, less requirements than any other solution to the environment. But still, there are some requirements. There are some prerequisites that needs to be done before the start the replication. But in general, this is the list of the database that are more or less supported. So, and uh, here is about the supported uh, replication topologies, what you can do with Repsons. So you can set up uh, just a simple replication one-to-one, -one, saying that your data is going to be taken from one database, put into another database, and that's it. This is 99% of all the use cases. Then you can set up one to many rep uh, replication. This is very interesting configuration. So you can take your data, let's say from, as an example, from Oracle database, and take it only one time, and take uh, everything that you need, and then you can just apply, any, uh, just let's say stick other processes which are consuming this this stream of data and propagate this into the different databases. So you can have your data generated in Oracle. And this stream is coming into the Oracle, into the Postgre, into the Snowflake, and it's coming simultaneously. So this is one to many configuration. And you don't need to do it like many one to one. So you can take all the data uh, from source database one, only one time and then spread this data across different databases. So this is why I I so uh, I put this into the separate picture. So one to many is not many one to one. Okay. Next is by direction replication. This is more complex topologies, but you can have let's say you can have two nodes that are quote unquote equal by meaning that if you insert any records into one node, it's going to be appears in this, in another node and vice versa. So there is no such thing like this is a main or primarily databases or are or databases are equal. And but this is more complex configuration. It requires some let let's say database preparation and it it uh, might require some database changes. The way how the trigger are created, the way how foreign keys are created, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But reference uh, has loopback control. And with this feature, all this complex replication uh, are supported. And it has another feature called uh, uh, represent itself as a replication agent. And this is this is more this is this is a complex parameter to to explain. But the idea is that uh, it will it will be visible on the database as a MS SQL agent. And there is going to be some extended functionality available for reference. So it it can say that I'm replication, I'm I'm action as replication agent. And it it means that uh, some trigger which are marked as not for replication are not going to be fired, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this is a complex thing. So I would not like to stay on this, but uh, believe me, we can do bi-direction replication, we can do 
even this happened spoke and uh, I don't know a couple of months ago I I did this configuration just just to evaluate Repson so I have my Oracle database in the center and this is was like uh, hub database and I I had one Oracle and another MySQL databases as a uh, nodes and uh, all uh, nodes were equal so if I insert the data into let's say Oracle the data is propagated into another Oracle and another MySQL if I insert the data into MySQL it propagated in Oracle and then Oracle push data here so if you if you go and run the query on on the any nodes it's going to return the same results okay so this 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 topologies are supported so let's move next. and now we 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 are going we, we are we are getting close to this <laughs> to the point where I'm going to to show it to you and now we are let's discuss how to get started with it so reference is delivered as virtual machine image instance whatever uh, and it's it, it, it accessible in both uh, AWS and Azure marketplace so here we go if I go here I can I can just select this instance launch it and that's it so this is exactly what I did before this demo so I launched this instance just to have a prepared uh, from marketplace and then I upgraded it but oh, you you probably don't so I, I you you just need to to run it and maximum you, you you can do is just go into this instance and run yum upgrade and that's it just to have all the all the latest packages packages installed and uh okay so it can be taken from there you don't need to spend some time speaking to support asking for some licensing paying for this or etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's available uh Redford advanced edition uh has trial period in marketplaces so you can use it for free within five days it can also be deployed of the cloud infrastructure and but this is something that uh needs to be discussed directly with, with reference but I was involved in the project where we worked with some absolutely insane people they 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 didn't want to set up VPN configure uh, VPN uh, between on-prem and AWS data center uh, but they still needed replication and uh, and uh, we offered some bespoke configuration for them and the bespoke configuration was that part of the reference is running locally in customer data center generate some trial files some logs some transaction files and then they are uh, in response of delivery this reference files to the AWS by themselves and in AWS we had another reference instance which is just to consume the data and apply these changes so this in this it's more complex configuration so but in this configuration we use two references one is in customer data center and another is in AWS and uh, they are not linked to each other so they did uh, file exchange through the x3 uh, and uh, so they didn't have a direct connection from AWS to their data center and uh, so they had to 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 pay to pay double price for this because they had to have they did due to their security violation the security security policies they had to buy another reference instance which is running locally which is not cloud and which is does something that is being consumed but by, by another reference instance running in AWS well. okay so the the easy way is just to go to marketplace and launch, launch it from there. But still, some options are available, like you can have it out of the cloud infrastructure. And once you get reference, uh, you need to 
maintain it and judge with regs on somehow. And there are three possible ways how to do it. You can you can uh, use web UI to set up everything. You can use uh, REST API command line interface. Uh, this is like an old style school. I personally love it. I don't like UI because it's it, it requires sometimes you just don't access to it and you can action through the command line and uh, you can uh, interface with instance using uh, rest api so you can you can you can uh, you can make some calls some which are to configure reps and to run replication stop replication create some processes through the json so there is uh, some endpoint available and you can do everything that you are doing through the ui or through the red CLI. you can do all these things through the json and this is very cool feature because you can take you can use this json for some external instance configuration so this is something that makes platform dbs any devops guys happy bunny so they are absolutely happy about this because they can uh, they can uh, have this json and then get reps and merit with their crazy terraform i don't know cloud formation scripts by just encapsulating the json into json call into into deployment process and make make uh, deployment and configuration of replication part of deployment process should they say and it's doable it's doable very easy through the call of rest api which is fully supported better. Okay. Uh, let's speak about the architecture of Rexons and uh, main terminology. Uh, so there are two main things in Rexons that we need to know. So first is replication is uh, implemented by using at least two type of processes this is a sort uh, this is a capture process and this is a uh, apply process uh, so this is to implement full configuration another important thing is that uh, communication between these two processes are implemented through the files and we will speak about uh, like a general architecture we will speak why this approach is good or why this approach is not good, where, where this approach is good, where it's not good. So let's have like a brief overview there. And so uh, speaking about the processes, here we have, let's say, our source and target database. In order to have data replicated from source, from source database to the target, it, it more probably more correct to say target system, it's not databases, as S3 is supported is target as well so it's not a database so target system so we need to replicate our data from source to target and uh, how we are doing this first is we need to extract data and to extract data we need process we need to configure process we need and the process type is capture process and once it's configured we can configure and we need to configure apply process or apply processes this is another type of process which is consuming data from capture and propagate data into the target database. So how it looks? Oh, sorry, let me let me go back. So we have source database, and we need to configure capture process. And the capture process is in response of extracting CDC records, including concomitant changes. This is very important. And but this is for Oracle only. For MS SQL, uh, they are using CDC tables and uh, uncommitted data is not appears there until it's <laughs> just don't appear there. and uh, then it capture process is in response of extracting initial load data process and committed transaction if commit or web marker has been received and writes committed changes into trial files in sequential order that uh, in, in the same sequential order as the as transaction occurred in the source database and it writes a checkpoint so after each spin of capture process is going to produce trial files 
maybe initial load files, uncommitted files, some metadata files, this is supplemental, some transaction details like what is active transaction, what is inactive, I don't know. And main thing is checkpoint. So it will record the timestamp, uh, logical system number, or uh, SCN, LSN of the, of the timestamp where it was stopped or where the last uh, successful run occurred. And then uh, we have an apply process. And the apply process is to consume these files. So it reads the trial files with initial load files, and it does all the magic, or it's probably correct to say witchcraft. And uh, with all the data, with object, all, all the data and objects, with uh, it applies all the filters, doing loopback control, and sort data into the target database at the at the end of of this action. And it writes checkpoint to the database. Why I highlighted this point as a separate point? So how reference does? You need to you you have some transaction occurred on the source database. Reference will take this transaction and generate statement for the target database, and it encapsulates part of the statement, which is to update checkpoint information into this transaction, saying that this transaction, I don't know, the position of this transaction is from here to there. Okay. And if your transaction has been committed successfully, the information about checkpoint will be updated as well. If not, then not. On the next run, after the in, after the after uh, of any interruptions, uh, your apply process will go to the target database, read this checkpoint, understand where it, at what timestamp, at what point it has been stopped, and then it will start exactly from the same checkpoint where it was at at what it was completed. So this is important thing, but, uh, and here is, I'm saying this because reference has very, very good uh, mechanism to protect uh, your data, your application from any uh, outage, any disaster, et cetera, et cetera. So if your instance was turned off in the middle of replication, then that's fine. Reference will restart uh, this replication exactly from, from the time point where it was, at where the last successful transaction was processed. Uh, okay, so let's move next. And uh, here I'm, I will give just more details about capture. So I already said the capture process is extracting data from source database, write this data into the trial files. So this is main thing. This is the main thing to understand. So you have some process extracting data, put data into the trial files, and then you can have another process which is taking this data and insert this into the target database. This is pretty simple. And here, what you can we can say that you can have not only one process, you can have many processes doing the same with the same trial files, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. This is why uh, some architecture like uh, one to many is is easy to implement as is likely to see. Uh, so speaking about the capture process, we are setting the replication using these three parameters. Or sorry, four parameters maybe, but this is with this is more complex way. This is to reload. So in simple case, we need just to provide the mail include and DDL include or exclude. And using this parameter, we can define set of the objects that are going to be included either into the DML replication or into the DDL replication, or to be loaded, reloaded, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, the mechanism how to provide this uh, set of the object is very agile. So you can say. Okay, uh, include this set. Okay, include all the tables starting with R into the replication, but in, only into the demo replication. And include all the tables starting with, I know, from with, with B uh, and include this into the DDL replication. So you will have a different set of the objects for, for different types of the replication. You can say that include everything, but includes, exclude some, some another type of the object. So, Include all the objects starting from rep, but uh, exclude if they are, I don't know, if the table name is reported. Something like this. Uh, on our demo, I will show you how to do this, how to use these parameters, and it's it's very simple. And if I'm speaking about reference, about all this 
since I'm not speaking about the product, I'm speaking about the simplicity. And uh, uh, on our demo, I will show you that it's pretty, pretty simple to configure reference, to set up the replication, to do everything that usually takes a lot of time with any other solution. And uh, so speaking about reference, first, I'm thinking about simplicity. And second, I'm thinking about the high speed of replication, data migration, and everything. So, but the first is simplicity. You don't need to spend a lot of time just understand how to launch instance, how to configure it, how to set up some, um, I don't know, basic stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's move next. And using map parameters, the map parameters are define the objects and possible transformation rule. So next is apply process. As I said, it, it is it's consuming data, generate data set, apply this into the target database, and it uh, create all the transactions using some rules like transformation, filtering, loopback, using all the settings. And the main thing here that all the transactions are executed in the same order as they, as they are occurred in the source database, and each, each transaction has let's say, uh, checkpoint details encapsulated inside this transaction. Okay, so thinking about file architecture. Yes, if we're taking data, put this data into the files, and then we have another process reading this data, yes, we spend additional input output to write and read these files. And yes, it requires additional space to store the file. And yes, we need to maintain the trial files. And I put this as a disadvantage of this architecture approach, but uh, thinking about the advantages is that capture and apply processes are independent. So you can have your capture running somewhere, I don't know, in customer data center, doing something, generating trial files, and then you can just deliver this trial files into the cloud environment and run apply, apply in there, and it, it will produce, uh, process all these files, and it doesn't need to have available or running capture process. It does all the replication from the trial file. And the same for capture. It doesn't need any apply process consuming uh, its data because it's, so it's, uh, they are mutually independent. With this feature, you can set up like a part of the replication are working in one data center, another in another. You can have your source database and start capturing data, but target database in, is being created right now. And this is one of the cases that I faced in, in my, in one of my, one of my projects. So they, 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 they have source database, which is already created, but target the but creating their target database is, it takes a couple of hours, but during these hours, you need to, uh, take all the changes secured on the source database, uh, to have mechanism to apply them. Uh, very quickly once the target database is available. Okay, uh, you can reset your apply process. This is, you can say for your apply process, start from some given SN. And this SN, uh, the only thing that this SN has to be available in trial file. That's it. And the last thing is you can even roll back transaction and this is so you can roll in some transaction and then you can say okay roll back me all the transaction on target side to some SN LSN and it will do it will run all the operation in the reverse side in, in the reverse mode by meaning that uh, all the insert will be replaced to update uh, to, to delete all the all the delete to insert and update will be generated so old values will be exchanged with the new values and it will run the trial files in, in, in reverse mode in opposite side and will do all this, will do their, their back of database. It's, it's, uh, it's a very good feature, but it's more for to diagnose something to, it's more like <laughs> lovely DBA feature. Okay. So I spoke a lot about the, the, this, this uh, tool. And now let's do the demo because I can see that we are running a, a bit out of time. And uh, so let's concentrate, concentrate on that. So what we have here, what I have here, or we have here. So let me, let me we have enough for this demo. Uh, we all this, we, we, we we did all the stuff and uh, I prepared this slide 
use case. And this is, let, let give me five minutes. I will just explain where we can do it. Why, why we need reference. So we can use it for any real time reporting system, any BI stuff, etc. So we can use this to build logic of combine. So you can have your data, but you are not limited to any, you don't have any geographical limitation. You don't have any cloud limitation. You can have your database running in AWS environment and your by running in Azure environment. And they are going to be in sync. Reference is super fast, super fast. It works when I, uh, where any other solution does. And it's very simple. If you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours speaking to and you know, support asking how to <laughs> how to make my replication quote unquote work workable then this is not the reference case reference is going the reference does what it says this is the main things about this pro pro and maybe so this is the various scenarios. So this is logical standby data migration. This is a reporting system, and there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of settings how, how to adjust the, the, the replication to for reporting for, for data migration, etc. So it's 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 not only just to provide two parameters and set up the replication, push the data. There are a lot of parameters, and there are, which are influenced to the how we are taking the data to the database performance, how we populate it, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very, uh, it, it looks like a simple product and, and it has a very simple in, intuitive uh, configuration, but engine is very complex. It does very, very cool stuff. And now when to use and what when to not to use REST. So when to use REST. We are speaking about any configuration which are supported by REST or any other. So when any other tools does not work, this is the general case. Do everything with data migration services. Oh, sorry, data migration services not doesn't work. Okay, do whatever you need to do. Just replicate the data. And here is where the reference came, came to, to play. So this is where when when we need to run. If any other tools doesn't work, then it's maybe a good challenge for reference. Reference is super fast. It's faster maybe. For some type of replication, it's faster 10 times, 100, 100 times than any other solution. So uh, if you don't want to, to sit in to, and to having a cup of coffee waiting while your uh, 10 records have been replicated from one database to another database, then this is not, this is not for reps. So reps do, does everything very fast. And it's, it's, sometimes it's even problematic for them. I, 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 uh, when I was in the process of preparing them, I, I wanted to show you statistics, how the, the, the data is being processed. And then I realized that it processed 100,000 records so, so fast that I even can't catch the statistics and show you how it works, how, how, how it's going to estimate uh, the time to be spent to, to process the transaction because it's, it's just happening immediately. It's super fast. And you need this product if you believe that data consistency is one of the most important things for data replication. So reference, the first like a top priority for reference to avoid any data loss, to avoid any data inconsistency. So it will produce and will roll all the transaction in the same order as they occur from the source database. It will respect all the data consistency. It will respect all the so all the data, everything. So it's 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 the main thing is not the speed but have the same set of data since, uh, as it, it, it is on the source side. So it's, if you, if you don't, if the, any data loss is unacceptable, so reference is for it. You don't want to spend hours just to understand how to install replication tools. This is about the golden gate. Don't get me wrong. I love Oracle Golden Gate. This is a great tool, but you need to be a certified Oracle DBA just to understand how to install it, <laughs> how to create all the. So I, I was shocked when I found a YouTube video. It 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 was about one hour just explaining how to prepare your environment and set up this tool, not to run the replication, but set up. It's you need to spend one hour of watching this video. So if you don't like it, go with reference. You will spend five minutes to to launch it, set up basic replication, and replicate it. And 
if you don't want to waste time on useless all these support services. This is about the mess. I don't know how many uh, how many hours of my life I I I was wasted doing this stupid course which lead which which led to nothing. But okay. But and when not to use reps. And this is there is still cases when you don't need to use reps. If customer loves to complicate simple things and happy to pay for implementing such approaches. This is a very general thing. So you are you are coming to customers saying, hey, you can we, we need to set up the replication from, from, from Oracle and to Snowflake. And that's it. You don't need anything else. Well, no, it's not gonna work. We need to take our data, we need to put this into the S3 bucket, we need to have some some processes which are taking this data from S3 bucket, doing some uh convert the CDC changes into the into the statements, do everything. And we need we don't need the project which is we are going to complete in two days. We need the project which is going to be completed in one year. This is a this is a very typical and general case for, for many customers. And another is data loss is not a problem. And every customer says that we are we don't care we 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 we, we care about data consistency about data loss. But I saw a lot of projects that they said, okay, you didn't load this month, that's not a problem. Okay, we, we can do it later. Okay, you didn't we did we don't have this data. Okay, no worries. Okay, we can we can remove it. Nobody look at this. So if data loss is not a problem, don't use it. <coughs> if customer needs process but not the result. This is a typical for many body shop projects where customer thinks that he generate the idea what 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 needs to be done and how it's, it's going to be and it's still he he she still happy to pay for it and the last one is that according to company security policies the access to, to the database is strongly prohibited this is just uh, a humor here but yes we face it with such sort of cases so and here what I want to say that reference is not a fortune teller solution so it can't predict what is going to happen on your source database. It's going to um, it's going to go to the source database and find out what was done there. And it yes, it requires some uh, infrastructure changes. So it, the access to database uh, must be given to the reference. The port should be open, etc., etc., etc. Reference is very agile in this configuration, so it can. As I said before, we can split the reference into several parts. We can we can avoid having the direct connection between cloud and uh, user environments, and etc. 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 But reference still need access to the source database. And that's it. okay. That's probably pretty much it. At least I can't think of anything else. And if you have any questions, let's discuss it. I still have some 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 power and some some desire to answer any all your questions. I don't know if you have. Only one last from my side. Uh, I was wondering because this is uh, in the end the product and it's provided by some companies. So what about support? Because we are paying for the instance. So if something goes south, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. who can we contact? Yeah, you can you can contact support at Repsense.com. They are very user friendly. And uh, according to my experience, it was one case that uh, it was only with Repsense. So we had one, we had some problem not very critical but the problem occurred on the in the in our production environment and we we called we gave a call to Repson. We, we already have some conversation through the email they they just gave number to us saying that okay if you have any any problem just give a bell to us and we will we will have to resolve it. we gave a call to them and can you imagine that the fix was provided in the half an hour and in one hour, it was installed in our production. So they, they did a new version in one hour. So we say this is a production. And uh, so product, so like tool itself, the support is very, very fast. So I heard a lot of things from many other supports that uh, I was involved in one, one call with five trans support. That was absolutely insane. So we we were needed to replicate 2000 tables from uh, ms sql to snowflake and the process of replicate and all the tables summary have less than 1 million records everything 
and the process of replicating these tables from MS SQL to uh, Snowflake uh, took about three days. About three days. Can you imagine this? And we started speaking to support and say, say hey, hey, guys, it's not acceptable. How is it possible? It's then they said, well, we see it is at 2,000 tables. And all good things come to those who wait. And this phrase, all, do, all good things come to those who wait, it's not about the reference. Reference does everything immediately. It's about the replication. It's about support. It's about everything. Yeah, you have support at reference.com. You can write a mail. You will get your answer in a couple of hours. And if you need any help, they are very keen to go to call with you, to do everything, to do any screen sharing. And they are just, okay, show the problem, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we will be back to you in a while. And in the 15 minutes, they said, okay, I think we found the issue and it's going to be fixed. If you need uh, like an urgent fix, we can provide bespoke build to you and it's going to be available in the 15 minutes. So this is how support comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you.